And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I might run through the presentation a little bit with you. Um, about uh, two years ago, uh, we, of course, see a lot of patients who have progressed on multiple prior therapies. And about two years ago, we started measuring uh, conventional targets like estrogen receptor, thymidylate synthase, which would predict for response to 5-FU in patients after they progressed on all therapies and found that about 71% of the time you actually saw a target for which we had a conventional anti-cancer agent available. And if we used microarray, about 99% of the time. And we felt that uh, we ought to do a clinical trial to determine whether or not, if you treated patients according to that particular target, whether or not the patient uh, might have a favorable outcome. So with a gift uh, from the Stardust Foundation, a substantial gift, we started a prospective trial for patients who had progressed on all known therapies to profile their tumor and determine whether or not we could give them a longer time before their tumor progressed versus the time that they were just on their prior therapy. 106 patients uh, signed the informed consent for this study, and the first thing we learned is that there were 40 that did not go forward with the study because they had deteriorating condition uh, or that they did not want to have the biopsy. And uh, that uh, left us with 66 patients who uh, proceeded with the study. In those patients who proceeded with the study, there were 18 who had a longer time to progression when we selected therapy based on this profiling uh, versus the time that they had just progressed on their therapy. That was 27%. We thought that to be promising, it would have to be 15% or more. So 27% of the time, this patient had a positive effect. Uh, what was surprising to us is that positive effect translated into an improvement in survival, as we'll show tomorrow, with those patients who uh, had a response, in other words, this progression-free survival of uh, more than 130%, uh, they had about a 40% 15-month survival versus 20% when they did not have that effect. And that told us that our endpoint was a, a good endpoint. Uh, other endpoints, uh, we had six patients who had uh, somewhat dramatic shrinkage of their tumor, and about 47% of patients with this selected therapy had some shrinkage of their tumor. So our conclusions uh, on this study, are, number one, is that molecular profiling of patients' tumors, even when they progressed on all the therapies, and by the way, 30% had already been on prior phase one therapies, that about 27% of patients you could help with molecular profiling and then treating those patients with conventional agents that are available. Uh, the second thing is that we felt that this was promising enough to add the newer technologies that we'll hear about this, uh, this week, I'm sure, like comparative genomic hybridization, next generation sequencing, and indeed even deeper sequencing to see if we can get more targets in patients' tumors for which we have new therapeutics. And uh, this was uh, to end this was a study that was conducted in nine separate centers, so there would be access of patients to multiple centers around the United States. It was a fairly significant effort. It took 105 uh, individuals with uh, research nurses, data managers, et cetera, uh, to perform this study. So it was a sizable study looking at molecular profiling.